today i will discuss about how we can diagnose glaucoma glaucoma is not only about raised iop we need to assess the anterior chamber angle corneal thickness optic nerve visual field due to multiple investigations required to diagnose glaucoma most hospital offer glaucoma workup package following test need to be done to diagnosis glaucoma one slit lamp examination 2 iop measurement 3 cap disc ratio analysis 4 central corneal thickness 5 visual field analysis 6 rnfl that is retinal nerve fiber layer analysis and 7 gonioscopy now slit lamp examination in slit lamp examination we assess if there are any causative signs pupil size and reaction raised iop can dilate pupil and react slowly different pupil size between eyes also suggest raised iop bone herrick technique for anterior chamber angle assessment it's a qualitative procedure for assessment of anterior chamber angle it's done with optic section illumination with full length and narrow width and angle between illumination and observation system is 60 degree focusing on the peripheral cornea the gap that is black space between the corneal section and reflected lights on the iris is compared with the width of corneal section if the width of black space is half or more than the corneal section width then the angle is considered white or normal here in this figure you can see this is width of corneal section and this is width of black space the black space between the corneal section and iris reflex is more than half of the width of the corneal section so this patient's anterior chamber angle is open angle or normal angle now iop measurement raised iop is most common sign for glaucoma but all the tonometers are not equally accurate among all the tonometers goldman appreciation tonometer is most accurate and considered as gold standard for iop measurement iop more than 22 mm of mercury is considered glaucoma suspect most tonometers are calibrated for the cornea with thickness 545 microns so if corneal thickness varies more than 10 microns we need to correct the tonometer reading to get the actual iop We will discuss details about this in central corneal thickness slide. Now, cup disc assessment. Normal cup disc ratio is 0.3 is to 1. Cup disc ratio more than 0.4 is to 1 is considered glaucoma suspect. Cup disc ratio can be identified by either direct ophthalmoscope or fundus photography. There is no specific scale to measure and compare the ratio between the cup and disc clinician compare the ratio based on his own point of view so this may vary from clinician to clinician now central corneal thickness almost all the tonometers are built based on central corneal thickness 545 microns if central corneal thickness is more or less than 545 microns then we need to correct the iop found in tonometry according to patient central corneal thickness generally for every 10 microns increased central corneal thickness we need to subtract 1 mm of mercury and for 10 microns of decreased central corneal thickness we need to add 1 mm of mercury below formula can be used to get actual iop of individual actual iop equal to IOP in tonometer minus central corneal thickness minus 545 divided by 10. For example, a patient's IOP found in non-contact tonometer is 23 mm of mercury. Patient's central corneal thickness is 575 microns. What is the patient's actual IOP? Here, central corneal thickness is 575. IOP in tonometer is 23. We have to find out actual IOP. According to formula actual IOP equal to 23 minus 575 minus 545 divided by 10 or actual IOP equal to 23 minus 30 divided by 10 or actual IOP equal to 23 minus 
or actual IOP is 20 mm of mercury. The initial IOP of this patient was 23 mm of mercury. But because of increased central corneal thickness, the actual IOP of this patient is 20 mm of mercury. Now, retinal nerve fiber layer. The weakest point of eyeball is optic disc area due to passing blood vessels, nerve, retinal nerve fiber, etc. When IOP raised, optic disc area feels more pressure than other area. Due to constant pressure, retinal nerve fiber keep dying and visual field defects develop. When retinal nerve fiber layer get damaged, the thickness of retinal nerve fiber layer get reduced. In optical coherence tomography, we can assess retinal nerve fiber layer thickness changes for the confirmatory glaucoma diagnosis. The retinal nerve fibers are arranged in a way that when IOP raised, it first affects inferior area, then superior, nasal, temporal respectively. This is called ISNT formula. Retinal nerve fiber layer thickness of a normal eye has 40 microns or greater. If the average thickness of retinal nerve fiber layer is below 80 micron, then it's considered glaucoma suspect. Now, gonioscopy. Most of the aqueous humor drains through the anterior chamber angle. Narrow or closed angle can lead to glaucoma. Gonioscopy helps to evaluate anterior chamber angle, whether it's wide open, normally open, moderately open, very narrow or closed. Anterior chamber angle is formed by the following structures. Root of iris, anterior ciliary body band, scleral spar, trabecular meshwork, swarp line. Depending upon how many above structures are visible through the gonioscopy lens, anterior chamber angle can be graded in five categories, which is called Shepherd's system. Now, visual field analysis. Visual field defects in glaucoma are initially observed in 10 to 25 degree from the fixation and correlate with optic disc changes. For visual field analysis, automated visual field analyzer that is Humphrey visual field analyzer is used widely. Glucobatous field defect should always be interpreted in conjunction with clinical features, IOP or optic disc changes. The criteria to level early, moderate, and severe glucomatous field defect in HFS Central 30-2 test following point can be analyzed. Stay with smart optometry and study optometry smartly.